Earlier today, I posted a series of tweets to Twitter and they got a little bit more attention than I was expecting. It's pretty normal for me to upload stable diffusion images to my Twitter account, but today I did something a little bit different. Instead of just uploading some random images that I had generated on Midjourney or Invoke AI, I actually was a little more, more intentional here. I picked Elon Musk because I have a ton of followers in the Tesla community, and so I knew that that would be something that people would find interesting. At the same time, I knew it would be entertaining if I did two different images, one with Elon Musk and Mary Barra, the CEO of General Motors, and one with AOC. Mostly because there was a hilarious video a few months ago where AOC and Elon Musk were sort of semi-dating in a joking, hilarious way. I posted these tweets thinking I might get a few good laughs out of people. Little did I know these would take off the way that they did, garnering over a million views in just a few short hours and receiving my very first response from Elon Musk himself, noting that he would never wear that outfit. Several people pretty quickly caught on that these were AI generated just by looking at things like the hands and small tiny details. I didn't spend so much time on these as to make them completely photorealistic. You could tell there were details that were off a little bit, but I think it shows where we're at with this technology is already at a crazy and somewhat alarming place. So how did I actually do this? Was it some complicated process that is out of reach for most people? No, in fact, it was really simple. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to make this happen. Now to generate these images, I used something called Midjourney, and specifically I used Midjourney version five. This is the latest release from the team, and I've gotta say, the level of photorealism and detail you can get out of these images is amazing. And if you're unfamiliar with Midjourney, it's a stable diffusion system that you can sign up for. It makes use of Discord, and you can simply give it a prompt and generate an artificial intelligence-based stable diffusion image of pretty much anything you want. There is a monthly subscription fee for this service, but it's a small price to pay for the really high quality that you get back from this. Now, if you'd rather do some of this stuff on your own, on your own home PC, if you've got a powerful enough system, you can use something like Automatic 1111 or Invoke AI to do this right locally on your own computer. I've got tutorials for both of those that you can check out above. Recently, the Midjourney team released version five of their stable diffusion model, and I've got to say the results I've seen from this are pretty spectacular. So I wanted to really put this through its paces, and that's what kicked this entire thing off. Once you've subscribed, you just jump into the Discord server and you start talking to the Midjourney bot. In this case, you can go Imagine, and then you just give it a prompt. In my case, I started off with Elon Musk dancing with Mary Barra. And one of the things that Stable Diffusion is pretty good about is picking up famous people or people that are noteworthy in some way. It's obviously been trained on a whole bunch of public images from all over the internet, and so it's typically able to pull up images that are pretty realistic of people that are well known in the industries. Now, why did I pick the CEO of GM, Mary Barra, for this first image? Hilariously, a few months ago, the President of the United States, Joe Biden, said, Mary, you did it. You led the way. And he was talking about General Motors at a time when they had only delivered a handful of electric vehicles to the actual mass market. At the same time, Elon Musk was almost completely snubbed by the President, even though he had delivered over a million vehicles with Tesla. Now, here we can see the first images have already come in, and we can go ahead and zoom in and see which ones we like and don't like. These are actually pretty decent. I would say number one, two, and four are probably the best of the bunch. So what you can do is you can go ahead and just so, okay, I want to upscale those. Going to upscale one. You can check it out, see if the quality is what you want. And you can already tell, like, look at the hands. The hands are like forced through each other. So, all right, probably not the best example that we want to use. And while Stable Diffusion and particularly Midjourney V5 have gotten much better at hands, there's still some issues as you can see. So we'll use one where their hands aren't touching and see if it's a little bit better. And this one looks pretty darn good. You can see something's going on with maybe her finger or thumb here, but it's not bad overall. Fist over on the other hand, eh, that could be better. So again, the hands kind of give this away, but if you're just posting this on the internet and people are taking a quick glance at it, it's going to fool most people, and that's kind of the spot that we're at with all this stuff. So here's another one. Again, the hands are kind of funky, but man, I've got to say, other than that, the quality of this photo, the natural look of all the people in the photo, the lighting, everything else, got to say is pretty spot on. So we could select this image as an example, and then what we would do if we wanted to, say, get some variations of it, is go, okay, now for image one, two, three, four, we want variations. So we'll go ahead and click on V4. That's going to be variations, whereas U is upscale. And now down here, it's going to go ahead and start rendering some different variations of that image. 
Now at the same time, we can do a different prompt. So we can go imagine and we can say Musk walking with AOC. And we'll get that one kicked off while this other one's rendering. And that should be done in just a moment. And you can see, it looks like it's gonna have slightly different hand positions and a little bit, I don't know, hopefully maybe a couple of these are a little bit better than the original. All right, let's take a look at these four. And let's see, second one, no, hands are all wonky in that one. First, third one, they're all wonky, fourth one. The first one's not too bad, although it looks like, I don't know, the, their arm back there, maybe it's going through each other. So still not quite right. What we could do is we could make a little bit more uh, variation on these images and we could just see if we can get another one back that's good. So you can see this isn't exact science. Like you have to go through this a few times to get it just right. But the fact of the matter is, other than the hands, these images are definitely photorealistic and it's crazy that we're already at this level. Now the ones with AOC and Elon Musk are almost done as well. So we'll wait just a moment and check those out. All right, these are actually quite good. And you can see the hands in the first one, second one, the hands in most of these look pretty good. The fourth image is a little weird because it looks like there's two AOCs walking sort of next to him. So that might not be a good one. Elon Musk doesn't, that's not very Elon Musk like in the third picture. The first two are pretty good. All right, let's upscale number two and see how that comes out. That is not bad. It looks like our other Mary and Elon photos have finished. Let's see if there's one with better hands. Oh, number three. I think that one's passable. Yeah. Let's go ahead and upscale number three. I would say this one at first glance, you're not gonna catch anything weird with the hands, at least nothing that's gonna immediately tell you that this was generated with stable diffusion. Now, of course, this would be even better if there was some sort of backstory. So let's see if we can come up with something using ChatGPT. So go to GPT-4 and we'll say, all right, so we'll say, pretend Elon Musk and Mary Bear are dating. What is the backstory for how they ended up together? We'll see if GPT comes up with something somewhat reasonable. All right, this is even better than I expected. In the summer of 2021, Elon Musk and Mary Barra found themselves at the same conference discussing the future of electric vehicles and sustainable transportation. The conference, called Electrifying the World, took place in the beautiful city of Geneva, Switzerland. As the CEOs of Tesla and GM, both Elon and Mary were keynote speakers at the event. During the conference, they happened to be seated next, next to each other at a round table discussion. They quickly discovered they shared a passion for innovation, clean energy, making a positive impact on the world. Their friendly rivalry turned into mutual admiration as they exchanged ideas and opinions on how to advance their respective companies. The following months, they kept in touch through emails and occasionally phone calls. By chance, they both attended another event in early 2022, the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. This time, they made a point of spending more time together outside the scheduled events, taking long walks in the snowy mountains, and discussing their visions for a sustainable future. One evening, as they were enjoying a quiet dinner in a cozy Swiss restaurant, they realized that their connection had grown into something more. The chemistry between them was undeniable and they decided to give their relationship a chance. Despite their busy schedules, Elon and Mary made an effort to see each other whenever possible, often meeting up in different cities around the world as their work commitments allowed. They bonded over their shared interests and their relationship blossomed into a powerful partnership that inspired both of them to push the boundaries of innovation even further. As word of their relationship spread, the media dubbed them the power couple of electric mobility. And their fans applauded the union of the two most influential features in the automotive industry. Together, they continued to drive the transition to a sustainable future, making their love story not just a personal journey, but a symbol of hope and progress in the world of green technology. That's actually really, really good. I'm telling you, so I think we're at a point with stable diffusion, artificial intelligence, GPT, all of this technology coming together, that it's going to be really difficult over the next few months to tell reality from make-believe. I think we're going to see more misinformation and disinformation spread across social media and other platforms than we've ever seen before. And the fact that even with my not that good tweet that I put out with not a great quality image of Elon Musk and Mary Barra, there were so many people that actually believed it and started retweeting it and spreading the message. That's a scary thing. I don't know where we go from here. How do you anticipate where this is gonna be in another six months? Because stable diffusion is a new technology. And yes, there are still issues with things like hands. It can't get hands quite right, but it's going to. And in a couple more months, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between reality and AI. Let me know what you think about that down in the comments below. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll catch you all next time. See ya.